Hello and welcome to um, the Zoom edition of Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah and you're watching Diaspora Network Television. Um, Ukraine is in the news. Um, there has been an invasion officially and we are blessed to be joined by uh, the president of National Union of Ghana Students, Ukraine, Mr. Philip Bobier Ansa, speaking to us from Venetia, Ukraine. Welcome, Mr. Bobier. Thank you. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great, thanks. How about you? Very good. Please educate us on what the situation is right now in Ukraine or where you are. Uh, okay, so I think I'll start from my city and then move. Uh, my tentacles across the, uh, the Senegal, like the entirety of Ukraine. So uh, in my city, uh, I think uh, over here, we have about uh, 65 Ghanaians studying over here, mainly medicine. Uh, then we also have other African countries like nationalities like Nigeria, Cameroon, uh, South Africa, Namibia, Zimbabwe. They all have Egypt. Egypt Egyptians are here, Moroccans, they are all here, they all study over here in, in Venetia and Ukraine at large. So uh, with, my, with my city particularly, uh, the news that we started hearing in the morning was that uh, there were attacks on military bases here in Ukraine, across Ukraine, across um, in the country. That is what we started hearing at dawn today. That is when the whole invasion started. So yes, even in my city being part of the geographically located at the central part of Ukraine, uh, I, I heard an explosion myself in my city, uh, which my uh, the, our university came later on to clarify that 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 uh, explosion we had actually wasn't targeted uh, to any infrastructure, any civilian infrastructure or whatsoever, but it was targeted uh, to a military base at a military base that we have here in Ukraine, as they've been doing across. Ukraine. So as a start, as we speak now, most Ukraine, uh, military bases in Ukraine have been destroyed by uh, Russian uh, missiles. So that is the kind of situation we have now. So when the strikes started, uh, we, I started having calls from uh, colleagues, friends, other Ghanaians in other cities, uh, this, especially the eastern part where we have um, that is very intense because that is where everything I mean started from. Uh, they sent me videos that you could see. Uh, right from their windows, uh, explosion. I mean, at a further distance, but you could see clearly it's not that far away from them. So they were terrified. Uh, they were panicking. They were anxious. And then uh, we, I, we did well to encourage them to still remain calm. That's the information coming in is that they are not targeting any civilian infrastructure. So we made that point very clear to them. And then they were able to calm down and also try to, I mean, uh, stay at peace. So that has been the news uh, today. Uh, I think when it started, it was very intense in the morning uh, on social media, whenever you turn it up, you see uh, these new news, I mean, coming on board about explosions here and there. So uh, that, that has been a case. By getting to the evening uh, part, uh, we, we, didn't, we weren't hearing such news again. We realized that even Ukraine has been defending themselves and they've even also strike, struck a few uh, uh, missiles belonging to Russia down. So, I mean, that was also kind of a boost to the Ukrainians over here and also, I mean, the foreigners as well. So that has been the situation. Okay, very good. Thanks for that. And uh, are you able to go out from your house into the city? Absolutely. Uh, yesterday, the president uh, announced uh, state of emergency, President Zelensky of Ukraine. So mm -hmm. since yesterday, we also started uh, encouraging our members, ad uh, educating them, uh, enlightening them what state of emergency is about so that they will know what to do in such situations. We advise them uh, to start, uh, I mean, getting food, piling up food stocks, uh, getting more tests, that things that can sustain them in the next couple of uh, days and weeks until maybe we see what happens in the situation, with the situation. And also uh, we advise them to start also withdrawing uh, cash from ATMs and all of that so that they don't have to go out and be in queues and all of that. So we put that advice uh, out there. Uh, some of our people were able to do that. 
uh, but others also couldn't because, I mean, uh, with that in mind, uh, other people was, were also, I mean, trying to get their monies, get food and all of that. So today in that dawn, we were really surprised. We, 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 we were anticipating whether the strike will happen or not, whether the attack will happen or not. And just today, we were caught by the element of surprise. I can assure you that we, we didn't think it would happen so soon. So uh, that came as a surprise to all of us. And since that time, uh, still, we can go out. Uh, I mean, they are, as I said, they are not attacking uh, civilians or any infrastructure, civilian infrastructure, just military bases. But we don't know what will happen after that. So we can move out and try to get a few things for food and water. Okay. You said there are, in your city of Venetia, there are 65 Ghanaians. Um, from... From your vantage point, those 65 Ghanaians, how many of them are students and how many of them are professionals living there, raising family and things like that? All of them are students. All of them are students. The non the non students, we have about 10 or so, or uh, maybe less. In, in, okay. In, yeah. In, in, but in, mostly, in, can you say the same about other, uh, other cities? In other words, the Ghanaian community in Ukraine, what percentage is students and what percentage, by your estimation, uh, or professionals. Ninety percent. Ninety percent are students. Yeah, yeah. Ninety okay. percent. Uh, we have our students, and, okay. and the remaining ten is yeah, non okay. non students. Uh, we heard in the news that uh, Nigeria has offered to evacuate her citizens from Ukraine. Are you? Is there something like that going on uh, from the Ghanaian government? Uh, even the Nigerian, I'm not sure that is the case. I think they have been following other embassies as well. I think their communicate they release was to uh, entreat their people to remain calm and try to find uh, safety shelters and all of that. Uh, Ghana is currently working on an evacuation process, but as we speak now, uh, the airspace of uh, Ukraine is closed. So, I mean, evacuation by air is not even in the question. It's out of the question until maybe there is ceasefire uh, by Russia. If that doesn't happen, the airspace will not be open for commercial flights or chartered flights to come in for the students. So any means of evacuation now will have to be by land, uh, whereby maybe we will uh, migrate uh, to neighboring countries uh, that share borders with Ukraine, like Poland, the western part, mm -hmm. Poland, and then uh, Moldova and all those cities. We can't attempt to go to the eastern part because Belarus is also, I mean, uh, doing this, I mean, attacks together with Russia. So okay. that, that is a, a bit about that. So Belarus is now uh, under the grace of Russia. Absolutely. And so, and so if you have to go anywhere to evacuate, you're looking um, to the west in Poland, right? Yeah. And yeah. then to the south, I'm not looking at the map right now, but you mentioned Moldova. Moldova okay. and even Romania Moldova. as well. Okay, very good. Uh, mm -hmm. it, so uh, as uh, the executive of the National Union of Ghana Students in Ukraine, um, if this thing continues, what is the plan for the Ghanaian community in Ukraine? Okay, so today uh, we've had a progressive talks with the embassy in Switzerland because we don't have a, a Ghana embassy here in Ukraine. So we speak directly with them. We are under their jurisdiction. We operate which, which, which embassy? In Switzerland, Switzerland Embassy. Switzerland, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so today we've had progressive talks and then uh, there, there are plans uh, in motion now. Uh, we they suggested uh, possible uh, evacuations. Uh, they, they, they asked us to suggest possible evacuation uh, scenarios for them so that they can help undertake in case their need arises. So we did that. Uh, what we did was give them the two options uh, with the air and then the, the, the land one, so that whatever is, I mean, becomes available, we move immediately. We move in unison, in UT immediately, and then make sure our people are safe. So uh, there have been more talks with that. Uh, they've even let us make budgets as to how to uh, uh, converge all of our people across the country to a certain, uh, I mean, uh, vocal point so that we can all move together. Uh, to Poland. So that has been the progress so far. Good. Are you at liberty to share the point person at the embassy in Switzerland that you're in contact with? No, I, I'm not sure I, I can do that, please. Okay. Maybe you can find out uh, at the, yeah, maybe from their website. Uh, okay. Yeah.
Okay, but what level is it? Is it high enough where you can uh, absolutely some conscious? Uh, yes. uh, I mean, confidence that uh, this will really happen, and not just maybe a low-level staff telling you what you want to hear, right? Yeah, it's high. It's high level. It's okay. high enough. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, what would you tell Ghanaians who have friends and relatives in Ukraine who are scared that something is going to happen? What would you tell them? Okay, so I'll use the opportunity to uh, encourage and entreat all parents. Uh, I know these times, most of them, uh, they are the ones mostly affected by this situation. Uh, send in your walls to make a living and then such instances uh, start happening. It's worrisome. And also to the loved ones and other relatives uh, as well. And what I would say is that pay our knowledge and pay the information we have now. Uh, know everyone, every single Ghanaian is safe. Uh, we've not had any casualty in our society as a Ghanaian uh, body, as a Ghanaian student body. Every student is safe. We are monitoring the situation. As I said, as I mentioned, uh, Russia is not targeting uh, civilians, which we are, of course, a part of that uh, criteria, that category. So they, they've not attacked us. They've not, uh, I mean, struck any missiles into uh, civilian buildings or, or of that sort. So all of us here, are safe. So I will encourage them to remain calm in this moment and pray, continually pray uh, for their for us, for their children, and pray that uh, God will find a way for all of us uh, to find safety. Okay. For you to say confidently that all Ghanaians are safe, you must have... Are you the, the president of National Union of Ghana students, all of Ukraine, or just... All of Ukraine. Of, all of Ukraine. Okay. And so what is the structure like? I, uh, I know we have Kiev, we have Kharkov. What are the major cities where Ghanaians are? So we have correspondents in all the cities. They also reside over those cities. They are like chapter, we call them city president, like in our constitution is chapter president. So okay. they are also aware, we communicate directly. As the national body, we communicate directly with them. Uh, okay. They are on the ground in the city. So they give us, I mean, uh, the real details of things happening, and then we take it from there. So that is how the structure is like. Very good. And to a larger extent, um, if you were to go into the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the Ukrainian community at large, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing came about because Ukraine used to be part of the Soviet Union, and after the collapse in 1989 of the Soviet Union, it became independent, and it's yeah. is pursued a Western direction, right? How mm. are the people, do they, if you were to ask people in Ukraine, the average Ukrainian, do you want to be part of Russia or do you want to come to the West? What would that answer be? <laughs> I think this is a matter I wouldn't really like to <laughs> venture into, but I can share my opinion. This is my uh -huh. personal opinion. Yeah, right. I think I think they wouldn't want that uh, per what we've seen so far. They wouldn't want what to move go back into Soviet Union. Oh, okay. So the Ukrainians are pretty Westernized now. Right. Yes, yes. They are fighting to be part of EU. Even since I came on this land, there, there was, I think in 2017, they were really advocating strongly to be part of EU. Uh, they had flags. I remember very well in my city, they had EU flags uh, all across the city uh, trying to celebrate that. So I think uh, with that, I can say they, uh, they really want to be part of the EU. Okay, very good. All right. Well, it looks like um, the alarm... Um, you said in the morning when it started, it was pretty intense and now it's gone down. Uh, has there been sporad uh, sporadic uh, bombings so or it just started and it went down and it's, uh, it has stayed down? Uh, the attacks are still ongoing. The attacks are still ongoing. Uh, but it's not as I mean, frequent as it was in them. I think they are maybe trying to raise strategy because, as I said, a number of uh, Russians, uh, I mean, uh, airships, uh, yeah, air, uh, uh, flights have also been shot down, uh, uh, struck down. So maybe that is the reason they, I mean, cooled things down a bit. I don't know. I don't really know the strategy, okay. but that is the situation. So what are you seeing? What is the TV showing now? Are they showing regular programming or uh, is it? Yes. Yes. They are showing live updates all the time about how kind of But otherwise... Other regular TV and uh, you know social programming are going on. Be yes. 
on TV, right? Yes. But yes. you don't have people going into bars to drink or anything like no, that. No, 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 no. Okay. No, no. Everybody is indoors. Yes, yes. Okay. Is indoors. But the trains, if you were to, if the evacuation were to come out right now and you have to get in the train or by land to go to Poland in order to be airlifted from there, what, how smooth do you anticipate that ride to be? It's going to be challenging. So we are just, uh, today that is, uh, today the plan just came into effect today so we are working on it we know that some cities have been i mean uh, i think seats at all we, they are the city centers uh, one city called Sumi. they have their ammo trucks in the center of the city so <laughs> they are trying to i mean see the city so we are still, still trying to find ways we can get our people out of there to i mean move them towards the western part of ukraine so that we can all meet and 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 embark on that i mean uh embark on that uh, trajectory yeah Okay, very good. Uh, President of National Union of Ghana Students in Ukraine, Mr. Philip Bobier Asa, right? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank if you. there is any update, please do not hesitate to uh, get us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. Take care. Cool, fresh and trendy with a new look Makes you feel real good, that refreshing vibe Satisfies you right just the way you like Feel different, think special. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Diaspora Weekly with Jermaine and Chroma. You're watching Diaspora Network Television. We're joined by DNT correspondent in Ukraine, now Dr. Madeline Nonquer. When he started, you used to be princess, now you're a doctor. What's going on? <laughs> a princess had to grow up. <laughs> oh, so the princess has grown up. Now she's a doctor, Madeline Nankwea. Yes. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Jermaine. First Thanks of all, I appreciate, I appreciate all the updates that you give us from uh, Ukraine. But now this is the mother of all updates. Tell us what's going on in Ukraine. Ah, right now in Ukraine, I don't even know where to start from. A lot is going on now. A lot. Everybody is trying to find shelter, airports have been shut down. One airport in Ivano has already been hit. The roads oh. have been attacked now because of um, probably the cyber attack that happened yesterday. Putin is monitoring every movement and he's seeing that everybody's trying to flee to a nearby city called Lviv. So he started attacking roads now and most people are currently in the subways now and some of us are in our homes, as you can see. I'm in my bedroom trying to stay safe here because it's not safe outside. There's okay. nowhere to even run to. The wow. subways were not even working. Intercity subways were not working. They just started working this evening and you can't even find anything. Like everywhere, everywhere is full. Like, and right now, some people are even hiding in subways because they double as bomb shelters as well. Okay. So what about buses? Uh, people in buses heading eastward, I mean, westward? Uh, yeah, this morning people were in buses, but then what happened is because everybody was fleeing, they, there was a lot of traffic, so they blocked most of the buses from entering other cities from wherever they were traveling to. So people were stuck on the road. But those that left on time, I heard that some Nigerian guys, once um, they heard the sounds, the war sirens, they started moving. So those ones were able to get to the Lviv city and crossed over to Poland now, where oh, they wow. are safe as refugees yes okay and you said um for, let, me, let me let me go back to what you just said you said uh, when the bombing started i think it was only concentrated on 
uh, military installations. Military, yes, yes, yes. But now you're saying that it's expanded into civilian, uh, in, like roads and stuff? Yeah, roads, but civilians are not the target. They are just blocking roads now. Right now, the Ukrainian military is on most of the roads now, and the Russians are also there now, and they are blocking the road. They don't want them to move. That's what's happening now. But no target has been made on any civilian as we speak now. They're just right. trying to prevent people from fleeing. Maybe probably because they think if people want to flee, they want to prevent them from fleeing so that they can instill more panic that something is happening. I don't know. But, but you say it's Ukrainian forces that are preventing people from fleeing westward towards... They are trying to protect the people because the Russian troops are stopping them. Oh, so now Russian troops are in Ukraine proper. Yes, but they are not everywhere. It's just these places that people are fleeing to, like some locations like on Lviv, the road to Lviv, for instance. There are reports that there are actually troops on ground right now that are stopping people from moving into the city. Okay. Now, so the, you know the, the, the areas that uh, Putin declared independent, which was between Ukraine and Russia, right? Lugansk and Donetsk, yeah. Okay. You're telling me that now you, uh, Russian troops are beyond those points and into Ukraine proper. Is that yes. Okay. That is what I'm saying. And, but they are not targeting civilians. They're just trying to no. block them from fleeing. Yes, yes. This was a report given to me by a Nigerian friend who okay. spoke to who was on the way, so... He was on a, but you say some of them have gone, uh, managed to... Yeah, had already gone beyond that point. Some okay. of them are already in Poland now. Okay. In, in, the, in the city of Kiev, do you know uh, how many, uh, do you have a, an idea of the number of Ghanaians that are there? Mm, I, I won't lie. I don't have an idea of the number of Ghanaians in Kiev. Okay. But your, your city, Kharkov City, that, that, that is much smaller than Kiev, right? Yeah, but okay. it's a very big city too because it's mostly populated, if not the most populated African um, city in Ukraine. I mean, okay. a city where Africans are residing in Ukraine. Okay. You, tell, you told me you were scared. What, why are you? Because I've known you to be a very brave young lady. What Mr. Happened? Jermaine, right now I'm scared, but I'm still the bravest woman out there because I'm staying in my house alone uh -huh. in this time. So I'm kind of brave, but I'm scared because I don't know what will happen next. Okay. Um, people that were here during the 2014 attack says right now the what Ukraine, yeah, what Russia is doing is they want to cripple our military bases now so that they can now send troops on land. So very soon troops will be. Russian troops will be in Ukraine moving with guns and all of that. And that's risky because when it happens, the government is going to license civilians to be able to hold guns. I know there are always bad guys who would want to take advantage of the situation. Okay. So, yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I'm scared because it can escalate to that very, very, very soon. And I feel like Putin is being provoked so much right now. Provoked by who, do you think? I should know, provoked by NATO, the international community. He made a statement this afternoon saying that any international country that wants to get involved, they should be ready to <laughs> face full consequences and wrath of Russia. What is he trying to say? Interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah. the, the, have you had the chance to interact with regular Ukrainians since this bombing started? Yes, I spoke to my neighbors and mm. they were calm. They were very calm. They said I should remain inside, that if anything should happen, they will knock on my door and we'll move together. I was lucky. Like, one of my neighbors speaks English very well, so we didn't have to go communicating in Russian where maybe there will be a break in communication because of language barrier or something. Do I speak Russian, but, you know. Is there a difference between Russian and Ukrainian language? <laughs> yes, there is a big difference. It's like... Um, Asking if there's a difference between Chi and Fante. Okay, so it's, it's yeah. fairly close, but there's a clear difference. Yeah. Okay. Yes, there is. So do you think the Ukrainian, what do they, what do they, what's their view of uh, Putin and what's going on? <sighs> I, 
right now i can't even say much on that because ukraine like if you go on the streets right now the country is very calm like the streets are calm where i'm staying like it's calm people are not panicking maybe probably because they've seen this before and they said they are not scared of um putin um i think on 22nd a group of people protested i don't remember their name but they were protesting saying that they are not scared of putin hmm okay yeah but are they in bars and stuff or not right now everybody is trying to get shelter so they are not in bars like i don't think like even some companies were not working today people went to work and they said they are close to further notice okay all right now what about the other um Af- african uh, brothers and sisters we know about nigerians and i also know their uh, Congolese and stuff. What's the, what the community? Are you guys together on this, or you relate mostly with the Ghanaian community? Mm, me, I relate with everybody. I'm African, so okay. I relate with everybody. Um, for Nigerians, they are, their embassy just dropped a message this afternoon, urging them to stay safe and that if they want to travel, they should make sure that they have all the unnecessary documents in touch. Um, Morocco, for instance, um, already ask their citizens to come back that if anything should happen that was last week they asked them to leave ukraine that if anything should happen the embassy will not be responsible so morocco has left most moroccans in ukraine have left egypt to the same thing they they evacuated their people yeah these are the africans okay so if if the Ghanaian community wants to evacuate right now and 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 your president the president uh, of national union of ghana students ukraine said that they are in touch with um, the Ghanaian embassy in Switzerland, which is the one that has jurisdiction over Ukraine, that uh, talks are ongoing about you, uh, evacuating. But with the airspace blocked, how would you evacuate? I hope they open, they open up the airports now. I hope they open, because if they don't, there is no way to evacuate. There won't be any way for us to leave. How are we going to Not leave? the trains... The trains, the trains, the trains. Right now, it's it's sketchy because even as of this afternoon, intercity trains were not working. It's just this evening that they started working. And okay. I was even trying to look for a train to um, the safe haven city called Lviv. And I'm not getting anything from Kiev till Tuesday. Okay. All right. What about mm. buses? You, you said buses. they're blocking. Yes, buses, you can't even book buses too. Buses were not available this afternoon. The okay. only means of transportation was private cars this afternoon and most of them were so expensive. And if you don't have a, uh, so the private cars right now, some of them are taking the people commercially? If, if, because yeah, if- there is this, this um, application called Black Black Eyes, like um, people, people with private cars that want to journey with somebody. So, most of these people want to carry people along, but they are charging ridiculous amounts of money. Oh, I can imagine. What about yes. cash? Were you guys able to? I know you said you reported earlier that there were long queues at the ATM. What is that situation now? Mm, yes, because there are rumors that banks are going to be closed very soon. So everybody should just get hold of every cash that you can. So I think most people have withdrawn cash. I have. Okay, but yeah. if if the financial sector was uh, hit by a cyber attack, how were you guys able to withdraw cash? Oh, it didn't affect cash just, Yeah, the dollar just went high. The dollar just went high, but we're able to, you know, withdraw cash. So you, what you withdrew would be dollars or Ukrainian currency? Ukrainian currency. Okay. But, but the dollar, if you needed to get dollars, you could have. Yeah, but it would be so little. It would be little because it's gone up. By what yeah. percent do you think the dollar has gone up since this started? Mm, dollar was 28. Now it's 31.5. Oh, so that's, not, that's, that's not too bad, right? 28. This it was 28. By tomorrow, it will go high. <laughs> 28 to... <laughs> That's 28 of your currency to a dollar, right? And now it's 31. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. What about fuel and stuff? Fuel. Ah, there's fuel scarcity right now. There's no fuel anywhere. 
People oh, are really? complaining. Yes, there are, there, are there visible? Are there visible lines at the fuel station in Ukraine right now? Yes, there are. Okay. All right. So, what what would you tell Ghanaians who are worried about their friends and loved ones in Ukraine right now? Mm, I would say everybody should just keep praying for us right now because the situation is. I don't want to say it's bad, but that's what it is. And the only thing we can do right now, since there are no flights working, is for us to just keep safe and people back home should just remember us in their prayers. Okay. If you're able that to... That it doesn't escalate to the point where they will start targeting civilians. Civilians, right now, okay. Yeah. But right now, civilians are safe. Yeah, civilians are okay. safe now. Very good, very good. Well, Princess Dr. Madeline Nongkwea... You've been great for the DNT, and we hope you stay safe. Um, as, you, as we speak, you're looking to move westward to Poland, right? It's just the way to get there is the problem, right? Yes, yes. Okay. If you get to Poland, uh, and, and you say Poland is looking to get uh, to admit a, 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 million. a million refugees, do you, think yes. do you think they've reached that number by now? No, I don't think so because people could not move as of this afternoon. Okay. And if you get to Poland and the situation reverses, would you return? Do you trust Putin in not to do it again for you to return to Ukraine? Uh, that's, that's a very hard one to answer right now. <laughs> okay. When we get there, we'll decide. <laughs> we'll decide. Okay. All right. Well, very okay. good. Listen, we pray that you, got, you stay safe. You are the D, you are DNT's princess. I don't care if you are now a doctor; you're still our princess. So stay safe, keep your eyes open, and uh, you know how to reach us whenever there is any development, right? But All the right. internet the internet is restored. Did the internet ever go off? Or no, the internet is fine right now. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Stay safe, princess. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank right. you. Thank you so Thank much. You. You're welcome.